my name's Craig, I'm the Technical Manager here at QNAP UK. Now today we wanted to do a little demonstration video of uh, hardware transcoding, uh, specifically within Plex. Um, the NAS we're using today is the TVS-H1288X. Um, I've added something into this NAS though, so that we can uh, demo a sort of setup that a lot of customers uh, seem to be doing when we've been looking at the different forums out there for Plex and things. Um, a lot of people are putting GPUs inside the NAS, so uh, PCI Express GPUs. Um, so we've gone with a fairly uh, middle of the road option here. So we've got one over here on the right hand side. You can see we've got an expansion card that's added in. Uh, so if I click on that, we can pull up the information on it. So this is an NVIDIA, uh, say, GeForce GTX 1050 Ti uh, with about 4 gig of RAM on there. Um, we can see it's got some load on it at the moment. We've got um, a few transcodes happening right now in the background, which I'll pull in and show you how they're looking uh, in a moment. Um, to use the uh, GPU within Plex, um, you've got to have it obviously inserted into the NAS and you've got to come to this screen where you can select which mode it's used for. Uh, you can pass through the GPU through to different functions on the NAS, um, but you'll need to put it on the QTS mode. And when you first select that, um, it will pop you over to the App Center to make you install the NVIDIA driver. Um, it's about a four gig download for the driver, but it will go off, install the driver, set itself up and get itself running um, so that you can then assign it to the QTS mode. Uh, so once it's on that, you need to have Plex Media Server installed and you'll be able to um, uh, turn on hardware transcoding if you have a Plex Pass. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll pull up the resource monitor so we can see where we're currently at with the, uh, the, the, the usage on the GPU. Um, so here in the system resources, you can go look at what's being used by it. So we're seeing a few peaks and drops as it's letting the clients that are playing do some buffering. So it kind of peaks out at around the 30% uh, mark, but largely it drops down to nothing with them. So the GPU power isn't necessarily the most important thing. So there we can see a 20% spike. Um, over here on the right hand side though, um, you will generally run out of GPU RAM before you run out of the, the power from the GPU itself. Um, so here we can see we've got it loaded up at about nearly 50%. Um, so just to show you what we've got running uh, to get it up to close to that 50% mark. So if I just slide this out, we can see the Plex dashboard that's running on that NAS. So we can see over here, uh, we're playing a, a Wonder Woman 1984 file. Um, it's got um, several different clients all connected in at once. Um, so what we're doing here is we've got a 1080p base file and we're hardware transcoding that down to a 720p uh, 2 meg stream. And we've got a variety of clients connected here. So we've got quite a few uh, Plex uh, web players playing in Chrome. Uh, we've got an Android TV um, and we've also got an Android mobile connected. And you can see that almost all of these you can see underneath where the uh, uh, the symbol is you've got remote users. So I've got a few remote users connected in. I've got my Plex Android um, TV running on my Shield device here playing locally. Um, but the rest of these are actually all remote playing. So that's why they're having to stream it down to a lower level. Um, if you see the little HW logo next to the 1080p, you can see that means they're all doing hardware transcodes uh, within this environment. So that's what's creating uh, the demand on the GPU that we saw where it was up at the nearly 50% mark. Um, so that's with eight streams currently running. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start off a few more streams um, just so that we can see um, how it scales when you add um, an extra device playing. So I'll put some um, iOS devices here playing so that we can get them showing up in the list um, so that we can scale it up to um, a good transcode level. So there we go, I've added another one so that we can see um, a small spike has appeared on that one. Um, so it's all predictable. It goes up about 6% roughly for each one that we add in with these particular settings. Um, so I'll start off another one here so that we should hopefully see another step change in the RAM usage. Um, so there we go, we've got another one. So that's also doing it down to the uh, uh, 720p um, two, uh, two megabit setting is what we've, um, we've chosen to use for, this, uh, for these transcodes. Um, so if we go back and check the, uh, the the Plex status on that, so now we've got those two extra spikes that have happened there. We'll go back and see what's caused those. So we can see over here we've got a couple of iOS devices showing now, um, different ones down there. So I've got the two new iOS devices that added in, and we've got a total of 10 different devices all playing at once. 
Um, so I've got a, uh, a few web browsers open up, open up on a, uh, another machine here. So this, this way I can get a few uh, Plex Safari ones added in there. So we should start seeing number 11 pop up there. So if I slide back in the, um, the resource usage, we should be able to see those as they come back in and start playing. So make sure they're all set to the same 720p to make um, a second uh, option there. So we can see that we've got a little spike there of another one playing. And as we go through, we can get it up to quite a high level, um, quite a number of streams that can all be playing on this. So I'm just making sure I start all these from the beginning. <clears throat> okay, so that should be another one in there. So we should see another spike, um, make sure it's playing at the correct level. So the goal here is to get it up to a, a nice level. So we're getting it up to a higher level on the RAM usage. So if I slide that across just to illustrate, um, so now we've got the 12 streams playing, everything's playing nice and smooth at this end. Um, we'll add in another one so that it can start that up there. So we should start seeing this number at the top increase as I keep adding different clients to it. And everything's playing just fine on this level um, because we're not really taxing the GPU itself. It's just the RAM usage that's increasing. So you will get to a point eventually where the RAM usage increases to a level where you've used all the RAM uh, that's available on the GPU, um, and then it will default over to using the uh, the RAM and the CPU from the NAS itself to do these tasks. Um, so there, we've got quite a few streams running now uh, with all the different clients that we've got connected. So I'll go back to the summary screen on Plex just so you can see how that looks. Um, so if I just slide this one back out, so there we go. We can see that we've now got 14 clients playing. Everything is doing the hardware transcode. Uh, so we've got Android Mobile, um, iOS uh, uh, for Plex there. We've got Plex Web Connections, uh, Plex for Android TV playing, some more iOS. Um, we've got some Plex Web on Safari. Um, so a lot of different clients that are connected there. Everybody playing the exact same file at varying levels of uh, progress through the file. And it's working absolutely great. So if we were to slide that back in, just to illustrate, you know, I could probably add another couple of clients there till this RAM gets up to about 90, 95%, but the GPU itself isn't really been pushed so hard. Um, so this was this is working really great with this uh, GTX 1050 Ti. Um, so if you are looking to do a lot of streams, maybe some streams from 4K where the RAM usage would be higher per stream, um, it might be uh, more beneficial to get a GPU with a bit more RAM than the one I have here. The, the four gig of RAM will get used up um, before the power of the card itself gets used up. Um, so that's um, a, a really sort of basic demo of how we've got this, this unit set up. Um, it's just a, a fairly bog standard H1288X setup. Um, the RAM is still 16 gig, everything else is the same. Um, but Plex is functioning really, really well with this setup. So um, whether the users are remote, whether they're local, um, you can do a lot of um, hardware transcodes from the same device. And don't forget, once you do run out of the hardware transcode um, capability of the graphics card, um, Plex is intelligent enough that it will switch over to start using um, the CPU power and the, the RAM of the NAS to do software transcoding instead. So if you were to cap out at, say, 16 hardware transcodes, no problem. You could probably do several more using the, uh, the built-in uh, capabilities of the NAS um, uh, with its quite powerful CPU in this particular unit. It's a, a six core Xeon 12 threads, um, quite a powerful unit. So you'll still be able to do quite a few software transcodes um, off the back of this as well. Um, so that's uh, that's basically what I wanted to cover. If anybody has any questions, wants to see this tested in a different way, um, some different functionality tested, please do leave any suggestions in the, uh, in the comment box below. Um, and we'll try to cover those off or, you know, if you do have any questions about how we've got this set up, please, please do let us know. Um, one last thing I'll do is I will just uh, show you the, uh, the file that we've got, just so you can see um, the information on the file that we're transcoding. Um, so there's the bitrate. It's a uh, 1080p resolution file um, just added into this now as it's running QUTS Hero uh, for all this. So there's the ZFS data share that it's stored in. Um, H.264 file. Um, so for anybody that's interested in the uh, the specs of the file that we've just used, that's what the uh, uh, the specs are of this different this particular item. Okay. So uh, if anybody does have any questions, as I said, or or need to see any testing in any different type of setup, uh, please let us know, and we'll uh, uh, we'll we'll try and cover that off for you. Okay. Thanks a lot.